everyone here with another lash tutorial in this video I'll be showing you how I do my wet lash looks if you haven't heard of it it's a trending lash style that's basically meant to look like a freshly washed or wet volume set it's really pretty natural but full and actually really easy to do so let's get into it so I don't have a live model for this video, but this mannequin is my favorite to train students with or practice on because it's probably the closest to the real thing that we'll ever get. And that's because this mannequin has layers of lashes, so the set will look just as good on her as it would on a live model. First, let's set up our lash tile. I also really love these tiles because of the covering case. It just helps me keep everything hygienic and makes it easier for me to prep for my clients before each service. I do sell these tiles on my website. I will have the link in the description below if anyone's interested in purchasing. Be sure to use code PINK at checkout to save 10% off your first order. For this set, we will be using lengths 9, 10, 11, 13, 15, and 16, and for diameter and curl, 0 0.03 and CC curl. If you're wondering why I am skipping a couple of lengths, um, we will get into that a little further into the tutorial. So here's what the mapping for this set will look like. As usual, we will be working in layers as if the client's lashes are divided by a top layer and a bottom layer. I like to start by applying the longest lengths first, which would be 15 and 16. This way I can control where I am making the most wispy parts of the set. I don't want to put too many of these long lengths because it will make the set look less wispy. So try not to go overboard and more so just sprinkle them where you want to see longer peaks. All lashes in this set will be closed fans only. Close fans give this set the wet look because when your lashes are wet, the fans literally close up and give you that chunky, separated look that a lot of clients apparently like. Also, sometimes you'll hear me say close fans, sometimes I'll say spikes. I guess technically they're the same thing, but in my head, close fans are not as tightly closed as spikes are. And I may do a video on this, but I think I may be the only person that gets this deep about it so probably not but either way close fan or spike that's what we're applying on the set it's going to look the same if you want the tips of your lashes to look very sharp and spiky make sure after dipping the lash in the glue that you flip it over and pinch the tip so that it's tightly closed if you can't get them to close up tightly and they look a little bit fluffy at the tips, but you do want more of this spiky look, I will show you a trick at the end to fix it. So once you're happy with the amount of longer lengths that you've applied to the top layer, we're going to start sprinkling in some shorter lengths. This means anything size 10 through 13, but do keep in mind, wispy looks always look best when the shorter lengths are at least three sizes smaller than the longest. I wanted this set to look very wispy, so for this part, I'm using less 13s and more 10 and 11 for this part of the process. The 13s are more for a nice transition as we drop down shorter on the inner and outer corners. I hope that makes sense. If not, leave a comment and I can elaborate a little bit more on that. Of course, our inner and outer corners will be the shortest lengths, that being 9 and 10. And like I said, you can use some 13s to add some wispiness to those inners and outers to keep the texture and the set flowing. As usual, once you're satisfied with the top layer, you can move on to the next layer following the lengths we mapped out earlier. And if you would like to use a tape back method, I'm always an advocate for the tape back method just because it can make things so much faster and easier. For the bottom layer, we are mixing lengths 10 and 11. Aim for full coverage on this set because technically it is still a volume set and because it's already naturally gappy, more coverage will make the look more sustainable for the client. jump around when placing lashes which can be sort of confusing for newer lashers but to me it helps keep the set wispy and really mix around the lengths so give it a try if you 
you want to try a new method if it's too confusing and it's gonna make you take longer on the set then don't do it as always you are the artist there is no right or wrong way to do any set as long as you're applying things properly, feel free to make this set your own. You can try different lengths and diameters, and I really recommend using 0.07 when doing any set that requires making spikes or closed fans, just because it's definitely way easier to pick up the spikes with a thicker diameter than it is, say, 0.03 like I'm doing. So make it easier on yourself, especially if you're just starting out. 0.07 looks great for wispy wet sets. So here's the final look on our mannequin. As you can see, the tips are still a little bit fluffy and I kind of like it, but I'm going to show you that trick on how to make them look literally wet. Take a lash primer or even a sealer if you use it and a micro swab. Make sure you don't soak the lashes, but put a little on the tips and you can even brush it through while they're drying. Here's a result of that. It definitely does look a little bit better on a live model, but you get the idea. Here are two clients that I did this set on. Just a tip, shorter lengths will always look more dense than longer lengths, so keep this in mind when doing any set. But yeah, that's it for this tutorial on the wet lash look. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment for more tutorials. Thanks for watching!